Hi. Ooh, hello. <laughs> and welcome to Boobies. <laughs> I wasn't ready. How did we get that mixed up? I don't know. You start. That's why. Start hello. it. And hi. And welcome to Boobies. I like it. Keep it all in. Yeah, though. keep it all in. <laughs> we're your hosts. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Joshua. And today we're here to talk to you about Bing, 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 Bing. Hell House. LLC Origins, The Carmichael Manor. 2003, written and directed by Mr. Stephen Cognetti. Boop, 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 boop. We Second set of alarms. Met him. We did. Over well, the phone. Virtually. <laughs> Audibly? Audibly. Audibly. That's Audibly. still virtual, isn't it? Is that virtual? No, yeah. that's not virtual, is it? We didn't have a Zoom call with Digital. him. Digital. Like we had we met with him some other people. Digitally. I don't know. Some of the other. Not smart enough. Some of the other. Interviews. Mm-hmm. I almost said podcast. We're on Zoom via We're Zoom. On, via Zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that was kind of digitally. Mm-hmm. It was still via a digital. No, device. that's virtual. No, no. I'm, I'm that's virtually. that's virtual. Oh, virtual. To me, like the Zoom is like virtual, whereas just a phone call is more just like digitally. But all the, within the same. They he knows what our voices sound like. <laughs> yeah, which is really weird. That's pretty cool. That and is I can't cool. say. That I have a lot of directors of films that are on streaming platforms and have like a budget that know what my voice sounds like. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. We Makes we did pretty we've done pretty famous. good so far. Yeah. And we're only like we're not even thirty. Not yet. Not yet. Almost, Almost. there, but we're not even. We're I was not. like, Josh, I'm thirty, but Wait. I forgot. I'm not. No, you're not. I was like, don't say that. <laughs> you're not. Wait, I will it's be just in another month. month. Yeah. Sixteenth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and Andrews is 16th of this month, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's how I remember. I remember specifically because the 16th is my sister's birthday, but in September. Right. And so I stick in like, okay, I just know that it's lots of 16. My sister's 16, but it's Caitlin's in January, and that's really easy to remember. Mm-hmm. That would make it easy. Mm-hmm. But, anyways, we're here to talk to you about. Um, Hell House. Yeah. Uh, fourth. The fourth film in this franchise. Yeah. A. Um, a sequel, but kind of a, a prequel, but kind of a requel, or no, not even. But um, but it's taking us, as Mike would say, to a different planet. Yeah, yeah. We're going to Within the a same different universe. part of this world. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I see that. And so that's pretty cool. It's very they exciting, did a yeah. great job of connecting all the little threads and everything. Mm-hmm. And even watching it this time, there was more that I picked up on that I was like, oh. Than the first time mm-hmm. you watched it, yeah. Which is so cool. It's so fun whenever you can watch a movie multiple times and it give you a different viewing basically each time. Mm-hmm. So they did a great job. You kind of tend to um, watch it with a different perspective and then you have like, like you know, the rose-colored, li- rose-colored glasses are off. So you can like... See all the little nuances and details that you didn't pick up before. Yeah. Pretty cool. But basically, mm-hmm. we um, start mm-hmm. with Bradley. Open we sh- yeah. open with shots of the Carmichael house with Bradley's voice kind of voice going over. over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he is the co-founder of NetSleuths. My phone autocorrected sleuths to slurries. Slurries? Oh. Net slurries. Slurries. Interesting. What's a slurry? Uh, it's like oh, I think like a when slurry snow. of snow, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. Well, that's cute. Yep. But a yeah, the the, uh, the sleuths, not sloths, to be mistaken. Like we get not later. Sloths. Yeah. Yeah. By Chase. I'm not a sloth. <clears throat> yeah. That was funny. It was cute. It was a little little part of little humor, and that was kind of like. There was a couple moments, I guess, in the movie where there was humor injected in this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely. Like little jokes. Chuckled mm-hmm. a few times. Or like whenever um, um, Rebecca mm-hmm. was making the bed and like making a parody of like 
they're like, look at me making the bed. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but it yeah, cute. We, Lots of good humanizing moments in this mm-hmm. film. Very much so. Yeah. Especially even kind of even fleshing out like Chase's character and stuff and like giving him his background. Like, yeah. It makes you empathize with him. And then you're like, wow. Imagine if you're a recovering addict going into a haunted house. That fucking So he's sucks. an addict? Well, that's I what it gave to me. I couldn't tell if he had like schizophrenia or oh. something because he kept saying that the little girl wasn't there. And 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 but I also to him. think yeah. maybe that could have been Tully's daughter who he was seeing, that's or what the I little was, girl who disappeared in the hotel. That's what I was thinking that it was a little girl who disappeared yeah. in the hotel, which was also another way of how somehow even the hotel or Abaddon or whatever itself was make the evilness that is you know behind Tully's. Um, was contacting him in that way, maybe because he was just related to her and somehow they almost got to her, you know, back in the day through the carnival. Yeah. So it was connecting them somehow. But it could be that he, it was just schizophrenia or some other type of mental illness as opposed to a drug related incident. But yeah, they never really explicitly <clears throat> tell you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's what I was kind of picking more okay. up on. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Mm-hmm. I, I thought maybe of some sort of mental disorder um, since yeah. he was on medication too. Mm-hmm. So or a combination. Yeah. Who knows? He could be abusing his medication. Um, but we get from Bradley and like this voiceover a little bit of the history over the Carmichael Manor. Yeah. Essentially. Um, and how um, you know, like they were a really wealthy family. Um, and they lived in a, like a mansion that was miles, you know, on back backwoods roads you, you would have to get to to get to their house. So Surrounded really, by miles of forest <clears throat> secluded. and stuff too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Way off the beaten path. Yeah. And on, one October morning, Catherine and Eleanor, uh, the mother, wife, and daughter, um, the youngest daughter, right? Catherine, yes, yeah. was the youngest. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Eleanor was... The other daughter. Margaret's, yeah. Mar- Ellen. Margaret's Eleanor the one that might be the mom's name. Yeah, my bad. My bad. I don't know why I'm reading it backwards in my notes, but that's why I read. yes, Catherine and Eleanor were murdered. Um and they are the dad couldn't be found and Patrick couldn't be found either. But there was only one set of footprints that were found leaving like the premises. Yeah. With no blood. But they were Not all a like a single drop of blood anywhere. Yet the crime scenes upstairs were horrific. Mm-hmm. And crimes of rage or passion or very um, bloody. Yeah. Messy. When we get views, little snapshots of the crime scene photos, they look pretty gruesome. Mm-hmm. And um We also get background on Patrick and kind of some information that's not necessarily exonerating him, but kind of makes it seem like he couldn't have done uh, or pulled this off because prior to this happening, him and his older sister, uh, right? Margaret. Margaret, um, were in a car accident where she unfortunately passed away. She succumbed to injuries like there on the spot. They were hit by a drunk driver. And then he, which that was probably set up by Tully. Um, And then... Mm -hmm. um, he ended up losing part, lo- getting hurt on his arm. Was it his arm? Yeah. Yeah, his arm. Yeah. His arm was basically, you know, broken or yeah. something. Yeah, he only had, basically he had, had, had one arm. He had a little sling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it would have been rather hard for him to commit these murders mm-hmm. with the use of only one arm, yeah. with how and gruesome how. they were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, basically, yeah. That's yeah, it. it kind of Arthur and Patrick are missing. We don't know who they are. We also get Alicia, who is <clears throat> the writer. Yeah. Um, and she wrote a book, but I didn't catch the name of the book. I didn't either. It I didn't write it down. Really fast. Yeah. Um, and and she pops up like on, throughout the throughout entire the whole film. film. Yeah. Just yeah, as yeah. much as Bradley does. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like the narrators. Yeah. In essence. They're yeah. progressing the storyline. Mm-hmm. And. Um, But then basically, yeah, we get Arthur and Patrick are missing. Their bodies are never recovered. And it's kind of just this mystery. And a cold case file. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we're with Margot and Rebecca. Yes. Basically. um, And they're. We get that they've died on their fourth night in Mm -hmm. the manor. 
And this so is, we know from the start that they're going to die. They're dead. Yeah. yeah. And this is a uh, kind of like reminiscent of the other films. Bradley is the one who kind of got all this footage from her, recovered it and is putting it together mm-hmm. and is recovered in and put it work, together. Not mm-hmm. in love. Yeah. That was <laughs> that Rebecca. Would, that would be Rebecca. Um, and so we have them and we have um, it starts to play their 911 call, right? From the night that everything happened. Yeah. That they were able to get and it's basically margo just pleading for help <clears throat> yeah we right. get it's rebecca on the oh, phone rebecca, my bad. and she's saying like oh hey it's working and then she mm-hmm. says margo don't it's not him because as we it's find a, out later chase has been missing and she's going to go she chase gets, after him yeah because she thinks that it's she's receiving text from him yeah receiving mm-hmm. text and at this point her voice is his voice is mm-hmm. calling out to her as well mm-hmm. um and then the phone line goes dead because as we establish very early on there's very shitty cell reser- reception reservice <laughs> reservice <laughs> reservice That's reception what you call it. in mm-hmm. the in this vic- like area yeah so but then we get a title card Title card. Just a nice, ominous Hell House LLC mm-hmm. origins. The Carmichael Manor. Carmichael Manor. It doesn't say it. No. But Mm-mm. it it says it it's with its text. heavily implied. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It feels very like somebody would narrate it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we basically get um, kind of it's setting up the footage that we are about to see, essentially. Um, and we cut to Rebecca and Marco pulling up to like a, like a food stop, like a little. Yeah. A little which, hole in the wall, gas mm-hmm. station, maybe slash. It's like you're all in like. Diner. Mm-hmm. That just has everything. It's, it's like a. Count, con, I don't know how to. Counter store. No. A, corner a, store. A corner store, a country market. <laughs> counter store. Yeah. <laughs> Very like 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 the check like the check store. I don't know if people. Yeah. Would be, I don't even know if people would. Uh, if honestly, you're in West, you nobody even knows what that is. That's listening. Um, basically, yeah, check stop. yeah. It's you know, it's got your gas station probably outside. It's got your locals. It's got someone who's running the cashier. But anyways, they're talking to this guy, and he's also kind of like you know, you can tell maybe it's small town vibes because he's like, why are y'all recording? Like he, when they have the. I mean, I would probably ask the same thing if you got a re- camera just like recording me in my face. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh well, yeah. Well, if I was, what are you gonna do with that? Mm-hmm. If I was, if somebody came up to me at my job and I was working mm-hmm. and they were just like filming me, I'd be like, "Excuse me, that's weird. Why? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna sign something. Yeah. Where's my release form? A waiver. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and basically, he knows all about what they're going to do because mm-hmm. she's explains that she owns and is an operator of Netsluice dot com, and that they are basically kind of going to investigate this unsolved murder. And he automatically is like, "Oh, the Carmichael Manor," and she's like, "You know it." Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, everyone." <laughs> in this town knows it kind of thing. Mm-hmm. We used to hang out there as kids. And party. And party in the backyard. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, I was just, every time they were driving out there and stuff, I was like, man, y'all really drove a long way to go party. Just to come party out here. Yeah. yeah. Which but, is super dangerous <laughs> to then have to drive that way back. They were getting drunk. Maybe they were drunk. passing out, out out there. Ugh. Scary. I mean, I wouldn't want to, but... Yeah, not knowing after I don't what know. happened. Did you here. ever pass out in a in a pasture or in a big field space of grass? Of, field of grass after as drinking. a little kid, not drinking. <laughs> okay, no. For some reason, I have I see these things like on TikTok or like maybe other things like on Reels. I don't know where people kind of like probably a little older than us, I guess, or around our age. Have like reminiscent of like back in the day when me and my friends would like, you know, get like some beers like in high school essentially and like go to like a, some field and just get drunk. Sounds like a bad country song. But then I, Robbie told me about how he did that one time, right? Like go how to he, a field he went to out some in a pasture thing and got drunk out there and passed out. And I was like, oh, I know that's what people like actually did. Like yeah. I thought I was just like, but I guess that's a thing that people do. I don't know. I feel like I missed out. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, we'll go drink at a field. <clears throat> and I have to pass out. Okay. And like wake up probably like, I don't know. Did people leave? Did people not? I'm just like imagining people like wake so up at bugs. two or three in the morning and then be like, oh, we got to go. Or is it like you just wake up at like the sun waking you up and there's like a cow in your face? <clears throat> like that, you know? <laughs> I don't know. But um, it's very, it gets very Disney Channel original movie. 
Cowbells. Cowbells. I loved Cowbells. But <laughs> Ali and AJ. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Oh. Did you ever watch that one? I don't know. Oh, it was a really good one. They were like rich heiresses, but then like their dad, his co-worker, like stole all the money from oh. the company. And so they had to start working so to pitch So it's like Shit's Creek meets The Simple oh. Life? Yeah, yeah. Very much that. And now, a word from our sponsors. And so we have them basically getting the rundown from him about all the partying and all of that. And, um, you know, they're kind of getting that the the gist of like, you know, that's pretty haunted. Don't want to mess around with that. And then yeah. we have Rebecca and Margo outside. And that's whenever they're setting up, I guess, staying there, I believe, or already talking about how they're going to stay there. And then Rebecca, we get that kind of mention of like, do we really have to kind of stay there? Like, can't we stay at like a hotel or something? Yeah, a nearby <laughs> hotel, which I was like, this place is secluded. There's not probably a nearby hotel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, I do. I hear her out, though. Like, if that town's close enough, maybe there's something there and they could just do a day trip and then drive back and then, you know. Yeah. But I I, wanna, I see why there's concern of staying in the haunted place. I do. Yeah. But I Because also, we also got mentioned, I don't think we mentioned the little old school footage of that guy in the house one year after their murders. You're right. My bad. And with the door closing and stuff and like paranormal events kept happening within the house mm -hmm. while other people were trying to film there. Yeah. And it, you know, he got annoyed and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But basically that sets up a lot of the paranormal background for yeah. us and letting us know that the place is haunted. Mm -hmm. um, I, for one, would not be staying in the bed that someone was murdered in. That's a bit weird. Yeah. That's a bit like you're asking for it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It almost seems disrespectful. It does. Yeah. I'm not I, at, like, their bed forever now. The dead person is the deceased person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to get rid of that bed. Get a new bed frame. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they got a new bed. I don't know. Kind of seems like they didn't. Just <laughs> covered in blood they just, when you kinda, take all the sheets kinda off. Kind of seems like they just they got put some a, bleach or something and just, like, no, not bleach even don't that. even they do that, right? They just put a, a <laughs> mattress topper on it. <laughs> they did. And they were like, oh. They just took it outside to dry. Covered that blood. They just took it outside to dry and air out. Dried in the sun. I also don't know. Does bleach get rid of blood? I think it will get rid of blood but on the surface level. Be like a stain. But if you took luminol, you would see and it. Stuff, see you'd it. still be able to see it. I don't it. know. I'm not a murderer, so I have never from my to clean many up. nights of watching forensic files. Oh, okay, it will still show mm. with luminol. There's nothing that can get rid other than like acid, right? There's nothing that could, but like get rid of. Blood. Like, you will always see it, right? Doesn't it, like, stain permanently with anything it lands on? Do you know? I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm I don't feel Google confident that. enough in my <laughs> answer to... Answer that live on air. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Someone's going to be like, be uh, like Actually, Caitlin said in this episode that... You're a dumb bitch. Mm -hmm. And it's not possible. All of Caitlin's information is misinformed. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin's just wrong all um, the time. Never. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Just something that popped into my head. But um, yes, we are now talking about, I think uh, there's mention of the Rockland County Fair, right, at this point? Yeah, because mm -hmm. that's what my note says next, too. And so Rockland County, she went to the Rockland County Fair once as a kid yeah. and was almost abducted. abducted, basically. And so we get that. Little Just kind of tidbit. Tidbit. They yeah. don't really delve more into it at this moment, but I love how we also get that really close up shot of just her as a kid. Yeah. That later on will zoom out because they love when to it do zoomed that out. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, That's I really, I did get excited. Yeah. I was like, oh the shit, clown. he's there. Yeah. Kind of also, how does this fucking clown get everywhere? I know this clown gets around. Yeah. I guess that's what happens when you're a supernatural clown. Yeah. Or not at that point. Hmm. Who what knows? came first, the chicken or the egg? The clown or the... I feel like there the, was definitely hmm. some culty shit at work in this fair. Yeah, there was. Um, and so we also then get introduced to when we're, we're arriving to the house. So we get to see like how 
you know, grand it is. It's a pretty big house. And then we get inside the house and we get to meet Donald, who is basically their tour guide or like the, the door ha- is just wide open. Guy. Sorry. Yeah, it is. That, I was mm-hmm. like, that's that's suspicious. It Do you think that's like the of, hotel? Yeah, like when the Inviting Abaddon Hotel would open the door in. I feel like the tour guide just left it open though. Yeah, I think he did. But, but still, you're right though. It is probably it giving me a nod. That. It's probably giving a nod to that. Because she does pause. Also, do we think that Donald, the tour person, is like in cahoots? Or maybe he's the spirit himself. <gasps> because he's also just like letting you, like, who, you know what I mean? Who is Donald? Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like. He, he could be in cahoots and, and like uh, trying to. Well, what if Donald is Patrick? Oh. Um, yeah, he could be. He could be. We don't know that. And he's been there the whole time. He never left. Yeah. He never he's been in that room the whole time in the clown suit. I did he, think that he Patrick never left. never left and he's just been in there. And oh, he's just building He just, he just the house. goes down to the kitchen, eats food every day. Donald like takes care of him, brings supplies, so mm-hmm. he doesn't have to leave. Donald is his bitch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're lovers. I love it. Hmm. I don't know. Gideon's probably like, no, that's <laughs> not what it is at all. <laughs> Because we interviewed, not what we, wrote. we got to interview yeah. Gideon as well, who mm-hmm. what plays Patrick. Patrick. Mm-hmm. I was unfortunately not a part of that. How was that? How it was, was super fun. Yeah. He was super nice. That's cool. Yeah. Did he give a lot of insight on like? Because uh, I'm gonna be super. I'm gonna be so happy to listen to that because I don't know how that call went. He <laughs> gave just enough away, but oh, okay. he obviously couldn't say so, uh, a whole lot. And like, it's not his movie to speak on the behalf of essentially almost. The only person who I think has given the most away has been Joe Bandelli. Mm-hmm. The, the producer. Yeah. Yes. The producer. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. I believe that's how you say his last name. Mm-hmm. I got yeah. to that mm-hmm. call late. Yeah. I was like rolling up at 6.02 uh, and was like, I'm Did it here. start at six? Or, yeah, or, it started oh, at six. Okay, gotcha. And I got to that call late. But he was super open and super involved, like just about everything. Oh. And so he was very fun to talk to. That's cool. And he also played Louis mm-hmm. in the third. And then the he's played the guy. clown. Yeah. And he's played Malcolm. He played Malcolm in the second film. The so camera the other camera guy. The other camera yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brock's mm-hmm. camera guy. Yeah. And Who we never we never got to see him on right because we never got to see him. Not really. On you camera, you see him hanging, That's and right. you see him whenever they first turn around, mm-hmm. and mm. you kind of see his face, but it's kind of obscured by the camera. He's holding the camera because it's not till the third one is when he plays Louis that we really get like more of him on screen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but he was probably the most open. But That's Gideon cool. was really fun to talk to. That's really cool. How exciting. So if you guys want to hear those conversations, stay tuned and keep a lookout for um, Abaddon Eyes. Yes. Um, the new podcast. Um, but yes, yes, yes. Uh, we are still um, going through the house. We are getting introduced to kind of the manor itself. And we get to see the family portrait that also was just kind of like... Um, Shit's great. Yeah, style. <laughs> it was so funny looking. Um, and it looks very forced. <clears throat> it, that's the word that I was going for. It looked very forced. Yeah. Obviously, nobody wanted to be there in that room. Um, and they are essentially going, they're talking about how, like, um, he's, like, basically saying, y'all could have stayed longer, but ha, 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 nobody even stays more than two nights, essentially. Yeah. Um, right. He's like, you could have stayed 20 nights, mm-hmm. but the no, estate's really trying to make us lock this place down and not let anyone in which what, which also is like what does that make what does that mean the mm-hmm. estate but then there's you who has more power i feel like the estate would have more power to be like shut it down just don't let people in here yeah, yeah. uh-huh you would think i don't know um, it's weird but as we're going throughout the manor we also get a notice of the kitchen buzzer mm-hmm. on the mm-hmm. wall mm-hmm. and I think Rebecca kind of plays with it and she's like, what's this? And then they're like, oh, that's, you know, whenever there was a full service like staff in the manor, basically you could be in your room and like call down. Kind of reminds me of the boy. Yeah. And with um, the bells, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of like that. They Um, were rich, rich. Yeah. They had staff. They had staff. Literally. That they didn't have to like. They didn't have to make dinner. Chef. They just like rung a bell. Ding dong. Ding dong. Yeah. Well, that was crazy I'd too. I'd like some cheese and crackers. 
the amount of money and wealth to have to be able to like do that. Yeah, can't imagine. Re- the, I mean, be me. honestly, I, I would. It'd be so cool to find a house like that nowadays, though. Not for like that reason, though, for a staff, but like just to like intercom systems are pretty cool. Old intercom yeah. systems. Yeah, that yeah. would it would be super neat. I would mm-hmm. buy a house probably just for that reason. For that reason, <laughs> if they were like. It needs a little work here. The bathroom's bad in this, but it's got an intercom system. Ah, okay. It's or it's got this old, like, dumb waiter or something. Oh, dumb waiters would be really cool. Yeah, yeah that's true. Mm-hmm. But also terrifying. It makes me think of Goosebumps and that mm-hmm. one where the head came it. up on the dumb waiter. It makes me think of Home Alone 3 when they switch the kid and it's no longer Macaulay Culkin, but Scarlett Johansson's in it as a teenager. Um, and... Anyways, at one part of it, he takes out the bottom part of the dumb waiter. Mm. Spoiler alert. And one of the crooks goes in from the top and she like sits and backs into it thinking she's going to like beat him downstairs as he's going downstairs. And she doesn't realize that the bottom's not there. And just like from the like attic all the way down to the first, the basement is like, <laughs> yeah. So that's probably what you mean by scary. And just like falls like ass first all the way down. Yeah. It's like, and obviously scary. in real life you might die. Yeah. Um, but it's like funny. Ha ha. And she's like, mm, you know, tweedle birds, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we also get note here that Catherine was only 17 when all this happened and Poor she Catherine. wanted to be a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. So she was always filming stuff around the house. Which, which just gives us a good reason to have all these old film footage to have. Of yes, them. exactly. Mm-hmm. Of the Carmichaels himself. Because we have to have a reason why the cameras are on. Yes. Yes. Um, and also, we a little bit before this um, – the one thing that is reliable in the house is the Wi-Fi, the internet. Yes. They, this was heavily mentioned because Rebecca needs the freaking internet to work because she's got a job to do still while she's there. Yeah. The okay. Wi-Fi is supposed to be Hella super strong. strong. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Never mind the, uh, the um, power, though. Yeah, for real. It's so, kind of important for the <laughs> yeah. Wi-Fi. If the power goes out, you're kind of fucked. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, they also get mentioned, too, as... What's his name? Bradley? Bradley. Mm-hmm. Bradley. The narrator guy? Mm-hmm. The, or, or not co- Bradley. Co- sorry. Douglas? Um, Douglas. Yeah. As Douglas is going to leave, he mentions like, hey, there is actually – have you ever heard of the old Abaddon Hotel? Mm. And they were like, "Uh, yeah, duh. It's a town over. I haven't – it burned down a few years back. And mm-hmm. he was like, oh, yeah, well, there's actually this antique store that recovered a lot of the goods from the hotel – and um, you might want to check it out. It, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Kind of thing. So, yeah, go buy this antique store. And really gives Rebecca's like, like hell yeah, antique store, which mm-hmm. would be me. Yeah. In that situation. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. One lesbian's always got to love an antique store. Well, I was about to say it's very or Nancy both. Maria, like the yeah. estate sales they go to. Mm hmm. Um, but, um, oop, not me outing people on the podcast. No, I'm just kidding. They're out. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I feel like they're pretty open. Um, no. um, and so we have um, them. And also, yeah, and you mentioning that Douglas mentions this also gives me more pause to think like Douglas is in on this shit. Douglas is in the cult. Because why would he fucking say that? Yeah. He's directly like leading them to go I mean, there. I guess he was just figured that they'd probably be interested no, in it. It's not because because of her that line of job yeah. and work. But specifically the Abaddon Hotel. Like, it gives that Douglas is very much in on it. Douglas is Tully's, like, I, bastard son that was, like, while he was still a pastor, like, had it with, like, I one of the- I want to go back co- to him being Patrick's lover. Oh, okay. Or Patrick's lover. Yes. And Patrick is leading him. And why can't he be Tully's bastard son who fell in love with Patrick? Patrick. And that's why he's- Literally- um, there's okay. so many layers to it. Steven, <laughs> are you listening? We're giving you We're not telling you how to write your movie. Story. But this could be a thing. <laughs> We're doing fanfic and shipping Patrick and Douglas. Yes. Um, and Douglas is now trying to bring Patrick back from the dead. <gasps> Just oh. like Margot. Margaret. Yeah. Not Margot. That's confusing. Margaret and Margot. The parallels. Yeah. Anyways, um, um, cut but- back to... Yeah. And then basically after that, we get mention of Chase and how he's invited. And Rebecca is pretty hesitant about this. She's like, he's a liability. 
we can't really have him. And Margot's like, no, he's going to be an extra set of hands. He's going to yeah. be super great. Like, we totally need him around. And Really trying to sell her on Chase coming. Yeah. I would personally feel better if there was somebody else there, too. Like, if there, mm-hmm. there's strength in numbers. True that. So I would be like, yay. <laughs> but also, I guess if I fully knew Chase's backstory, I wouldn't be saying yay. You, it, strength in numbers is good, but you, you want to make sure that it's, like, a reliable number, not someone that you could, you know, be a little flaky, maybe. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's all. Um, not to, not to speak ill on Chase. Cause it, I mean, he was doing his best, honestly. Yeah. He was doing his, honestly, he, he was, he did do his best. It's just, unfortunately, the power of the house won. Yep. Um, the clown got and the, him. Oh, and then even like his whole scenes with like, before, right before the clown gets him and then like, you know, the like cutting back and forth to like, there was Knox or, and then there wasn't. And then mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, it's night. And then there's dark and my bedroom door just opened. Like, um, I, 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 Chase was sticking through it. He was roughing it yeah. out. Like I would have like been I grabbed my stuff and been out. Yeah, but, or have at or least wo- gone to woken them up. Margo Some, and I'm sleeping room. in this room with y'all. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like Patrick did whenever he stayed the night at my brother when he stayed mm. the night at our house. Oh yeah, and every time that. he was about to go to sleep on the couch, something would snap right next to his ear oh. and wake him up. Why is your house haunted, Caitlin? It was haunted. That house, my old oh, house. Oh, different house. I'm like, yeah. the one you're at right now? No. Oh, okay. The old house yeah, on yeah, yeah. 1016 I didn't, I didn't was, was definitely haunted. haunted. Oh, that's yeah. scary. And so he uh, he came and woke us up, and he was like, I'm putting the couch cushions on the floor, and I'm sleeping in here. And he slept in the room <laughs> with us. Gives very conjuring. Yeah. Um, or no, they clap. Clap. <laughs> but we... Um, or yeah, the do, 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 do. I think at this point we get introduced also to the room that can't be opened, right? Yes, mm-hmm. we get. We're going through past. We get to the storage room, and um, well, at this point we got mention of it earlier that mm. he doesn't, doesn't have, have a key, key to it, mm-hmm. and it's been locked for years. But Margot somehow gets it open. Yeah. And so Margot opens it and Rebecca finds her just standing in the hallway, like observing. Yeah. Almost and, in a trance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Margot waves Rebecca over and then they go into the room and we see we see two clowns. Yeah. But apparently there's a third that we're not seeing mm-hmm. that Rebecca sees, but we don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and these clowns are terrifying too. The yeah. one with the triangles on its face. Yeah. So the one whose head was like slightly turned, mm-hmm. who ends up being the one in Patrick's room later. Later on. Mm-hmm. Um, that one was terrifying. Yes. Yeah. Because that, it looked like it wasn't a mask. It looked, it looked like, like a real like person. Someone was face, face was painted, painted. Mm-hmm. and it just looked like it was like actually staring at them, and it oh that one creeped me out every time that they just like. Yeah. Panned I, I, on its face and just left it there. I was like, fucking, I swear to God, if this motherfucker moves, well, I'm, I'm going to sure. lose it. Yeah, no, it was, it definitely, I mean, well, because I'm assuming it was a person, right? It's a total human being with face paint. But that's not a dummy. Yeah, I don't know. Well, it, when, when they went they, to go touch it, they yeah, definitely like made it, it seem like it was mask or like it wasn't human like, but I don't know if that could be done in editing or like with the prosthesis that they put on them or something. Yeah. Because in other shots, it definitely 100% I agree with you. It just looked like a person with face paint on. It yeah. it, it looks so lifelike and so real, like all the like you know the 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 attributes that someone's face would have like pores and skin details and yeah. all that type of stuff. It, it looks was super terrifying. real. Yeah. And um then this is where I think we actually get that when Margot was 10, she was almost abducted, mm, I think. Mm-hmm. And they say, like, they actually delve into the story of Margot and how she was at the fair and this man oh, yeah. approached her and mm-hmm. then tried to lure her off. And it took her a second to really kind of let it sink in. And then once she realized what was happening, she starts screaming. And and then the, I think, what's her name, Alicia? Mm-hmm. Um, she says, you know, lots of kids went missing from the fair that year. So it she must have known like she felt this responsible been, almost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she, you know, 
because she couldn't provide any sort of like witness testimony yeah. about what the guy looked like and stuff like that too. So she was like, "Oh no, like it's my fault." Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we get, and we get more information of how, like, also on uh, that, like, whenever because of her like thing that she developed with the internet sleuths and um, she would go deep into her projects and get lost in them and then also that this would be um, their last investigation or something like that right yeah it Not, ends up being yeah, because, because of their death dies. oh yeah well I guess that makes sense my bad <laughs> okay um, but yes and then it goes to night one right yes mm-hmm. so we get the film is in little segments Mm-hmm. Um, we've got night one, two, three, and four that we'll get, and this is our first kind of night one. Mm-hmm. And this is where you know Chase shows up and stuff, and he's like talking. And this is where we get the "I'm not much of a sloth" line, mm-hmm. and it, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you said that, and that's funny, and that's really funny. It was a little funny moment. Mm-hmm. It was funny. I I laughed. They're making fun of him a little bit. Um, right like before this, well, because when he when he um right before that's happening, we we are down in the area of like I guess the forty eight area because um what's her name Margot is reenacting like basically what happened the night of the incidents, the murders. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and then we get the sloth, and then that's whenever we have um I think after that Rebecca is talking to. Her boss or someone named Linda, yeah, right? Linda and mm-hmm. it's body cell reception mm-hmm. and she can't get her phone to work. That's right. And she goes downstairs and that's when she notices that the closet door is open and she's like, that's mm-hmm. weird. Um, but there, nothing much happens about that um, right now at this moment because that's whenever it's like the next morning and that's whenever we get that funny thing of like Rebecca recording herself and uh, making the bed. And she's kind of making a joke of like uh, Marco's like uh, intro, I guess, to their vi- to her videos or something like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we also get before that we get like Rebecca breaking the news that this will be one of the last times she's able to join. Oh my bad, you're right. Yeah, and um, we also get like Chase had an incident. Oh, I totally skipped all that. My bad. Kind of yeah. Thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Rebecca, not Rebecca, uh, Margo, Margo and Chase are talking, and he's like, "Well." Isn't it just convenient that you called me out here? Like, did you did you get a phone call from, from mom? mom. Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. And she was like, well, what if I did? Mm-hmm. And they are just kind of having sibling banter mm-hmm. going back and forth and on sensitive topics. So, yeah. And um, basically, it feels, he feels like she's like babying him almost in a way and like trying to like babysit him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because he went missing for two days, apparently. And then. I've then, done that before. Gone missing for two days? Uh, yeah, I used to be like right like nineteen twenty. I used to like go to Austin or Dallas and like not tell my family and oh. like not answer their phone calls or anything until like coming back two or three days later. Yikes. Yeah. It's not not too when I look back at it now, I'm like, what an asshole. Yeah. I was that was such an asshole of me to do to them. But yeah. Well, I was just don't you do live a, and you learn. a rebel phase. Yeah. Um but then we get the girls waking up to the sound of a girl singing, mm-hmm. basically in the middle of the night. Um, Rebecca, we get we wake up with Margot first, mm-hmm. and then she realizes Rebecca's not in the bed. And then yeah. she looks out the hallway, and Rebecca's like recording down the, the stairs. stairs, and she's like, "Hey, what what's going on?" And Rebecca's like, "I heard somebody singing," mm-hmm. and a so, girl, right? Like a girl, yeah, singing. A girl singing. Mm-hmm. And so she was like, okay, well, did you get it on camera? And she's like, I don't think I recorded in time. And so Margo just like with no hesitation just starts going downstairs. Yeah. Like, which I was right. like, ah. Bitch, no. I'm going then. Yeah. It'll turn the light on at least. Yeah. Just all dark and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. <laughs> and then I love how Rebecca's like, you see anything? And she's like, no, nothing's down here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. And then it's the next day. And this is where I interjected too soon but she starts making the bed right yeah Yeah. she makes the bed and it's a funny little cute scene that again humanizes and really lets you connect to rebecca not not funny for long though yeah because as soon as she turns that camera around on herself just like in the third film 
and stuff when Jane turns the camera around on herself, we get a picture of Catherine's body on the bed, bloodied, and it just kind of slowly turns its head and looks at her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ooh. Yeah. That's so scary to and she and Rebecca find doesn't that. know. Yeah, Rebecca has no clue because mm-hmm. she can't see it. So, but I mean, I imagine if she went back and watched the footage later, it'd be very haunting. Yeah, I'd be freaky. I'd definitely be pissing myself. Yeah, especially when you don't I'd know. Burn the camera. Well, you need the camera at that point. If the only way you can see the spirits is through the camera. Yeah. So, we have um. Her then, um, so I think it's morning. She's talking to Margo, right? And they want to go to the antique, antique store. Yep. And so they're up and they're going to go. and But before they can leave. They talk to Chase, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, they, and they find the trunk. Yeah. yeah. They're up in the storage room. Mm-hmm. And they're looking through the trunk with the, like, red balls in it and mm-hmm. stuff. And... The little weird, um, not not weird really, but those little clown yeah. bowling pin mm-hmm. things. I don't know what else to call them. But that they, they juggle with, right? Yeah, they kind of look like bowling pins. Mm-hmm. They've got little frayed uh, in edges and stuff. Mm-hmm. They're kind of cute. Like I would have one sit on my house, in my house. With the dolls. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. Steven, With the clowns. if you're listening and you have extra of those. Send them our way. Send them our way. Alico Building, Waco, Texas, 76705. Uh, room number 21. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Level 21. Um, but yes, um, and we have them going through all of that. And they find a bunch of stuff that's related to um, basically just all of the the Tully stuff and the, the clowns. And we just kind of get a little bit of like, well, what the fuck is all this doing here? Um, and then they're talking to Chase about how they're going to go to the antique store and they're talking and telling him about how he needs to record the whole day or like record everything while they're gone. Yeah. Don't turn the camera off. Um, I and think so he's like, I'm going to record myself in the bathroom or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He was like, OK, you want me to not turn this camera off? And then so then we get a lot of comical mm-hmm. footage with Chase. Of just going of through the him, house. Yeah. And being in the bedroom, like popping out of the closet going, boo. Mm-hmm. And then saying, Margo, I've solved your murders. <laughs> that never died. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And just and being. D- d- Goofing s- around. Yeah. Silly, goofy characters. And brushing his teeth, and he's like, "You brought this on yourself, Margo." Like, mm-hmm. just really laying it on thick. That like, oh. you asked me to record everything, so mm-hmm. you're gonna get everything. And and all fun and games and silly up until he hears a thud, a thump. Yep. Go off in the house, and he's like, "Wait, what was that? I'm alone in this house." Hmm. Um, and that's when he kind of is like, I, I don't know if it, he calls out even at this point, but he's like. It goes into the hall into the um hallway area and that's when he sees like the red ball on the floor and he's like well, that wasn't there before. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he is calling out. He's yeah, right. Like, he's like Margo, Margo mm-hmm. Rebecca, are you guys just fucking with me? Yeah, I didn't know if he I couldn't remember if he was doing it already before he walked into the hallway, but he definitely was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. And um he's finds the the ball on the, the ball. floor but then yeah. that's uh, he starts hearing it sounds like someone is pacing up and or back and forth or pacing up the hallway uh but he sees the shadow it's someone pacing back and forth in the room in the that, storage room the storage room yeah uh-huh. which was terrifying because mm-hmm. then you just know it's one of those clowns and it's like ah. well regardless of too he if you're supposed to be alone and then you see like a shadow going back and forth that's just like Mm. Yeah, I would be getting the hell out of that house. I wouldn't even go investigate. I wouldn't no. go look at it. Yeah, I'd go back goes, or I'd go back into my room, get, like go through a window. Climb, I don't know. Climb out the door window. Yeah. Yeah. That's what. I'd I, jump. I would. Yeah. I'd risk. I feel like I could make that jump. I don't know. But I wouldn't go past that hall. I wouldn't because I feel like that was the way out. I wouldn't go that way. Yeah. <laughs> like I would not go that way. Um, I and so, but but out. But guess where he does go? He goes right to the storage, storage room, room. Mm-hmm. and he puts pans it in there, and the clowns seem to be in place, like nothing's the matter. At least the two that we can see. Um, and he walks straight in there. But if that was me, I would have like tried to like get the camera and like 
You know yeah. what I mean? Like look and kind of like, like like if it was a mirror or something. Yeah. yeah. But I digress. Um. But yes. And then um. We cut to Margo and Rob. You know. Margo and Rebecca. Yeah. Oh, Margo and Robbie. <laughs> Margo Robbie. Margo Robbie. No, the, I just I I just wrote a paper yesterday actually on the Barbie uh, movie campaign oh, because really? I had to do something for my PR class and oh, it was choosing a PR campaign and like blah blah blah. So I, I literally just wrote six pages on like Barbie yesterday. So, so that's why it, that head. that was in my head. Yes. Um. But yes, we're with Margo and Rebecca <laughs> as they are looking through the antique store and they come and find this grandfather clock. Yes, which and is very familiar. Yes, because it's been inside the house and we see Brock's planchette there. Mm -hmm. We see some masks from the Insomnia crew. Um, we see just lots of little tidbits like a Hell Nods. House t-shirt mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So from we're all the other in films. that Abaddon Hotel area. And... Um, they find the grandfather clock, which Stephen said that he this clock was uh, like he bought it himself and mm -hmm. was like lugging it around and stuff, which is wild to me to think that, you know, a director would be yeah. so hands on. But oh, it's yeah. really cool. That's really cool. Um, but yeah, then basically Rebecca is like, hey, this clock has secret compartments. And mm -hmm. Marco's like, how the fuck do you know this? And then Rebecca's like, well, w one of the listings has a clock just like this. And all the German old manufacturers used to build li these little secret compartments. Yeah. And so she. They would hide Nazis in there. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's where little Anne Frank hid. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. That's where they in found the, the diary. Oh, I know that's not where the they clock. found it, but um, yes. And so it's actually kind of comes in clutch that Rebecca's line of work has her knowing this knowledge um, because she's able to find the little like secret. It's very national treasure. The yeah. the two identical, uh, what are they called? The the desk, the resolute desk. Mm. Um, she finds the way that you can like, you know, make the little door open, secret contraption open and she pops it open and then they're able to get in there. And there's like, what, a necklace in there? Yeah, a necklace that we see later in the film mm -hmm. um, as well as some old footage and mm -hmm. different like notes and stuff that – like say just like stuff about like they're from like Tully right in the hotel yeah, and they're and the hotel staff saying something about a pregnant like mm -hmm. she might be pregnant yeah. find her kind of thing um and so all these like kind of cryptic messages are found within it mm -hmm. and then we flash back to Chase don't we yes. as Margo sorry starts stealing all this stuff yeah. by the way <laughs> and she's like I'm just gonna take it and Rebecca's like you can't just take it and she's like yeah it was secret nobody even knew it was there we're just gonna which take is it. like I I can get behind her logic. But then, like as, as like a oh yeah, it's like a person who, who has, runs a small business. And yeah, like, yeah, I would be like, please don't steal from me. Don't steal my shit. Yeah, even if, if I, I didn't, didn't know, know it was there. there. Yeah, yeah. That'd I, be I'd like totally finding a twenty dollar bill inside one of the coat pockets that I have or something. Oh yeah, that's well. That's one also. Like I mean, ethics and morals. I thought I was at Hollister the other day buying a pair of jeans because I needed some jeans from Hollister and there was a dollar on the floor and it was just right there and it wasn't my dollar right but I'm like nobody else is here and I honestly for a moment was like I'm not gonna pick up this dollar I didn't I need I didn't need the dollar because I, I mean not truthfully like I'm I don't I didn't need the dollar you know yeah. what I mean I'm like well what if someone else needs the dollar what if so and I was also thinking like what if like no that's a sign from God <laughs> right that's you your dollar. The dollar well and then I was thinking like well what if someone because there were people were what if it was the someone who just so someone's about to come back and be like oh I dropped my dollar or something like that yeah. and I'm like oh, whoa <laughs> my bad I'm the one who picked it up but um Nah, it's 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 so bad that in my head I had to come up with the whole like backstory of like, nah, this is my dollar and it came out of my <laughs> I dropped no, it came it fell out of my wallet. You gaslit <laughs> I gaslit myself <laughs> into believing that it fell. No, this came out of my wallet. I picked I like picked the way I picked it up too. Like I had to pretend like, oh nope, okay, my dollar, my dollar. See, and this is where we differed. The other day I was walking down the road, yeah, and I found a dollar and I went, ooh, a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> then I just picked it up. Well, maybe and there were just... two people who were right there. And yeah. I like I did turn around and go, is this your dollar? And the man goes, you found it. You keep it. And uh, I was like. 
Finders Keepers, Losers Reapers. Thank right? you, sir. No, you know what's and real funny? I shoved that dollar into my pocket so fast and I had no remorse. One time I was out with two of my friends in high school time and we were taking pictures, you know, because like everybody thought they were a photographer back in the day. Yeah. And I was taking senior pictures for someone and we were walking and we were by the train tracks just right over here somewhere. And there was a $50 bill mm. and I found it. And I swear to God, it was, we all kind of found it, but like, it was that moment where like, I was the first one to like find it. And then like, but I could tell we all kind of like, I it almost at the same time. I was just the person to say something out loud and then go pick it up. But it, it was just funny. Cause I could tell like, they're kind of like, oh damn. We even... should have <laughs> shared that dollar. <laughs> no, you know what? We went to Walmart after and we all bought like ice cream or something with it. Like okay, it, I, I shared it. I shared the wealth, but nice. it, it was funny. But I, I was actually really stunned. I was like, there's a whole ass $50 bill. Just like crumbled up almost by the train track. Like, <laughs> no, like I don't know how it even would have got out there. Like, Someone that was, got murdered. Uh, probably. Um, someone was missing that $50 bill, unfortunately. Um, um, but then we get to one of the scariest parts in the movie. Yes. Sorry. Um, to me, mm. anyways. It's Chase. We're back with Chase in the house, and he is walking. This part is so scary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So scary. Because mm -hmm. he's walking down closer to the foyer, mm -hmm. and it... He comes into view and he's, he hears like a giggle, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. he hears a giggle, turns around, and then all of a sudden you just see this little arm wrapped around the pillar. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Hello? Oh, yeah. Like, what the fuck? And then she slides her arm back, which I think is terrifying to have it go slow like that. Remove. Like, yeah. Uh -huh. Like, ugh. And then all of a sudden, her whole body just leans out from outside of the pillar. Mm -hmm. And it's a very well-placed soundtrack, too, as moment, well in yeah. that moment. Um, it was like a nice like pluck of a string. Mm -hmm. And um, then he's just sitting there staring he at He almost her. doesn't have enough of a reaction for me because he's just kind of like, <laughs> he's kinda like, who the hell are you? Come yeah. out. Come out of there. Come over here. Yeah. Like, show yourself. He's almost. I, probably in shock. Yeah, but like doesn't run or move really or. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And then well, eventually. And then it's he, also not doing the. It's just looking. It's just staring. Staring at. So it's, I kind of get it. I get it. Yeah. I it, I would not Because if what it's to not do. doing anything, you're just kind of like, if anything, you're just trying to like keep it in your sight of line the whole yeah. time. Yeah. 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 And so then That's he what, eventually does charge it. Yeah. And it's funny because you would imagine, like, I'm, I guess he takes the, the defense, the offense because that's in those, the, that's the part of the movies where something's staring at you for the harm. And then I would know where it just starts darting at you. Yeah. Where you're like, Oh, what the fuck? Which if you have, have you noticed that like, the, those are becoming really popular on like reels and TikToks now where it's like, it's something else and it's making you look at something. And then it's like, boop, like the spiders or something. Oh, that, like, not seen that. I'll send you one. Okay. I'll show you. It's like, it gives very much like, remember that thing from like 2004 when it was like the car driving through the hills and then it's like the uh, exorcist lady's face pops up. In, like, oh, a demon's yeah. Face. It's very that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, oh, and of course, all, while all this is happening, the power is out yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So the power's out in the place, making it already creepy. Even mm -hmm. though it's midday, it's still... Just when the power's out, it's, you know, a little extra dark in the mm -hmm. house. And it's just unsettling. And then you see this bitch. Oh, and she had a mask on as well. Yeah. Which so gave like very, this, like, like... porcelain doll. Yeah, that. Esque. Oh, and very much uh, the houses that built us? Or October's oh, the house, house October built, yeah. There you go. The houses that built us. <laughs> <laughs> the houses that built us, really. My bad. That yeah. doesn't even make logical sense. <laughs> No, it does. Is it? The yeah. houses that built it? I guess if you mean it in like a sense of like the Home, the, the the house is like a house of family. Yeah. Like a, the, the house of Laganja Estranja. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that makes mm -hmm, sense. Mm -hmm. um, but basically she just slowly retreats behind the pillar and then he charges her and is like, what the fuck? Where, who are you? Where are you? Yeah. And then no one's there. And so then he's like, okay, like I'm freaking out now. And then it just and happens that the girls walk back into the house at this time. Yes, exactly. Well-timed. Mm -hmm. They come back and he's like rightly freaked out mm -hmm. and doesn't really go into much detail. He's just like, I got to talk to y'all. Mm -hmm. And then he, they sit down and review the camera footage, which is smart. Like at least he was recording. Right to it. Yeah. And it, you know. So 
basically they review the footage and they see Rebecca's like, oh shit, someone is there. Which I'm really glad they can see stuff because a lot of the times in like other movies, not in Hell House, because they do you do see it in these, but like it, it's like the things don't show up on camera when you yeah. see them in real life. And so people feel like either like they're crazy or whatever. But I'm really glad that like they can be like, oh, yeah, what the fuck? He did see something. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at this point, I think we also flash back to Bradley saying that the footage that was inside of the clock mm-hmm. was none other than footage of the Carmichaels mm-hmm. instead of like footage from the Abaddon Hotel yeah. because he says he he was expecting to find, yeah, early tapes of the Abaddon Hotel and but nope, it was the Carmichaels. Because how did that end up with a clock that was at the Abaddon Hotel? Yeah, Mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, it's all kind of connecting, which is weird. And then we're also, we're reviewing that footage now and we've got this like, I think how well, I don't remember if Casey mentioned it in two. We must not have. Um, but Patrick, like said, we get Mar- Margaret mm-hmm. popping out behind the pillar just as she just did. Yeah. Um, and scaring Catherine, mm-hmm. who's the, you know, remember a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. So she's recording everything. And then. She was like, oh, Patrick said we needed to add more drama to your films. Mm -hmm. And she's like, she wanted me. He wanted me to hide in your closet. And like, that would be so much scarier. But I think Casey mentioned that in some of the interviews that have been done. Because he was talking about how if. Because Margaret later on is hiding in the closet. Mm -hmm. And so she, he was wondering if that was like a last shred of like Patrick's humanity trying mm. to like one last little joke yeah. kind of thing with his I sister mm-hmm. having Margaret hide in the closet mm-hmm. to scare her kind of thing, which I, uh, I liked. Yeah. And I agree. Kind of imitates what they did in the past. Yeah. And um, they end up, we, we get all this footage, right? And then it's kind of going over how essentially this is right before she dies. Yes, this, this is, is right la- before the car. This is the last They're... footage we've ever seen. They're about to go to – she has a, a gig or something or – Yeah, she is going to be in Faust. Yeah, that's right, which is funny, oddly what enough, because – in In the third movie yeah exactly Mm -hmm. so she was going to do Faust for her play Mm -hmm. and they were going to drive into the city to be um, for her to do that and unfortunately this was the last um, known like footage of Margaret ever taken Mm -hmm. while she was alive because on their way back from rehearsal that day they would be in the car accident hit by the drunk driver of which ultimately kills Margaret Mm -hmm. um but then we flash to our night two, mm-hmm. right? I believe so. Yeah. And then there. This is when they're talking about the hotel more, right? Yeah, because mm-hmm. they're sitting at the table mm-hmm. and they're looking at the notes, and then how there's like no obvious motive for like why or what could have happened here behind Patrick or their dad. Like they're like we like what happened yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. and they're looking at some of the notes and one of the notes says something's coming cold Mm -hmm. the nightfall all things die and never come back which we get later on with Catherine when she finds the sheet music yeah um but and then there's also another note that says blood from the face if they return like hemo Tell I don't know something like that. Margot yeah. trips over the word in the movie, so mm-hmm. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. But it's basically saying when they return, they come back with blood from the eyes, like coming yeah. out of the eyes, which and is they're coming back which from hell. Looks like the clown too, mm-hmm. He's and like got and like and like all the other eyes. and like in the other movies, all the other ghost entities that come back, they always have these eyes that are like bloodied out. Yeah, like mm-hmm. uh, what's her name, Diane. Graves from the first one Diane. when she's in the second one Diane. playing the ditty mm-hmm. and her eyes are all gouged out too and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
then as they're <clears throat> sitting there talking, the lights the conveniently go out, go out oh, yet again. And, and right, right before then, I think, um, doesn't Margo give Chase the necklace or something as well or something like that? Oh, yeah. Or he keeps it or something like that? Yeah. He's like, oh, I could use this a little good luck. Mm -hmm. And um, keeps the cross necklace. It's not a good thing. To, not I, do, I would not keep jewelry that came from uh, well, that would. clock. I get, well, I guess you're into antique jewelry. But what if it's like haunted? Maybe that's why you have ghosties. Maybe. Maybe. It probably is. Maybe. Um, probably and <laughs> bring, I mean, yeah. You do have vintage clothing and like vintage dolls and stuff. Who yeah. Knows? Someone could be attached to it. That's so um, wild. Um, but yeah, sorry. Ch the power goes out and then they have to find the breakers, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And as the power goes out there, we get a little giggle again. Uh, Margaret's giggle mm -hmm. is what we can assume. Yeah. Um, but they are... Going to go find the breaker box, and as they make their way over there, right as they get to the closet, the lights conveniently turn back on. Yeah. And so they're like, oh, guess we didn't need the breakers anyway. And then Mar Margo starts walking back into the hallway, and then she pauses mid-sentence and is like, uh, and then everyone else comes rushing up like, what the fuck is it mm -hmm. that made you stop? And there's just one of those red balls from the trunk just sitting perfectly still in the middle of the hallway. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, how the fuck did that get there? Because they're like, that's from the chest room upstairs. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be out here in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. That's spooky. And I guess Chase failed to mention that he also saw yeah. I was like, one what? of those red balls. Um, but who knows? And then so... Then that's whenever Chase starts to con like get with Rebecca and he's like, basically, um, I know that my sister can like go really like deep. It's OK. Can like fall really deep into these things. And like she's really stubborn. But like if you know, if you happen to not feel comfortable, I just know that like I'm 100 percent down to leave. Yeah. Like, he's like, I got your back. Yeah. And then and it's like in a way because he's he's basically not saying like I want to get out of here. But he's saying like if you want to get out of here, like let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. We'll gang up against Margo and yeah. say, we're getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so he – then that's whenever we end up having some footage that was recovered from Rebecca, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Footage recovered from Rebecca's Talking computer. Talking to her boss. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Rebecca is having this conference call with her boss showing her some different listings that she found that she thinks would be good for her company to buy. Mm -hmm. um, and – as they're going through the first listing, everything seems okay until they get to a photo of the Abaddon Hotel. And she's like, that's weird. I don't know how that got there. And then just goes back and, you know, all the other photos are the same and mm -hmm. or what they're supposed to be. But then she goes to click on the next listing and all of a sudden there she's in the foyer of the house yeah. of the Carmichael Manor. Manor. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, this is lovely, but this doesn't really scream fixer upper kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, then as she clicks through the photos, we start slowly traveling up the stairs. Creepy. To where, yeah, this part was really unsettling. Mm -hmm. um, to where Rebecca is sitting in Catherine's room and we get Rebecca's back. We can see it. And as – It's like it's almost like a live feed. Yeah. Um, essentially. And mm -hmm. I almost wish that one of the photos as she turned around would have been of her facing the camera mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but anyways, she then proceeds, you know, keeps clicking through the photos. It gets closer and closer until we get in the room and somebody's standing next to her. Yeah. And it's just we see the silhouette of a woman mm -hmm. standing there. And then the next photo, I believe, is her then turned to face Rebecca. Yeah. And then the next photo is her like rah, into the camera. Into, essentially. Yeah. Right there. Right next to Rebecca's face. Mm -hmm. All terrified and stuff. Rebecca screaming. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then like the computer goes out mm -hmm. um, where and then as it's going out. Uh, like the phone call, conference call goes out. Her desktops, we see that there's like people in robes even in her desktop. 
Yeah. Did you notice that? Oh, no. No? Yeah. Her screen before the conference call, it was like a landscape or whatever. And there was like, there was, there was, there was nothing on it. But when it came back and the call was gone, there was figures and robes, like oh, very small. The there was two of them. Robes. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On the screen. And also like, kind of like, how the fuck did they pull that off? But okay. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Um, and then that's whenever we then cut to Rebecca and Margot fighting because Rebecca, I think at this point, is like, I want to go. I do not feel comfortable being here anymore. Yeah. Um, and she's like, look, like this is this is like you've got it. We've got enough. Like, obviously, this place is legit haunted. And that's whenever Margot is like, I think at this point, she's like, is this when she's like, we've actually found a haunted place and you want to leave? Like, yeah. we, like basically almost gaslighting her and being like, no, like one, no. we got to stay one more night. My notes just say, damn, Margo, because she was like, well, I'm sorry I made you come here yeah. kind of thing. And she's really gaslighting her, being an asshole. Yeah, I was like, oh, Margo, not chill. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and then she says the line, like, we finally found a haunted place and now you're trying to leave it mm-hmm. kind of thing. And Rebecca's like, yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm fucking. Like, yeah, that's kind of the point. That's kind of, yeah. I've been letting you do this little fun shits and giggle things because it's like your hobby, but like. This is getting serious, so I want to go. I want to yeah. leave. And obviously, and then she's she, like, Chase, she, back me up. And she's obviously, and she's honestly rightfully upset too because it interfered with her work. Yeah, like, she's like, point. I probably lost my job. The only thing that's supporting us, us float. yeah, mm-hmm. because Net Sluice isn't bringing in any money. And then you're right. She then tries to be like, Chase, back me up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Chase is like, yeah, mm-hmm. like <laughs> maybe I don't think we should stay here any longer than we have to. Yeah. Kind of thing. So, um, but they end up deciding to stay one more night and Chase comes downstairs, finds Rebecca sitting out on the back porch with like her little Uh cup of coffee, looking real cozy in a blankie and, um, talking about how the internet has been down since the presentation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, which it was supposed to be reliable. So Mm -hmm. that's a red flag. Uh Um, and then Basically, that's it, and we flash to night three. It's and the then, final countdown. The final countdown. It's such a good song. It is. Okay. <laughs> it also gives me a uh, very uh, maybe they got their inspiration. Remember the the SpongeBob uh, uh, God the band the band yeah. episode. Yeah. Da, 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 Oh, yeah. I don't remember the words, but yeah. Um, but they are going over the photo they found in the clock of the clowns and connecting the dots, essentially. Yes. Of what Pictures all kind of, of the happened. down a clock, down mm-hmm. a clown, down, down a, a clown, down a clown. You down and a clown, you win one round. Yes. Go to the next one, you big, you win a big clown. I don't know. <laughs> you you win this whole clown. You win a cult. You win a cult. You yeah. win death. Come here, children. I'm gonna eat your soul. <sighs> Love eating children's souls. Yeah, they taste like cotton chicken. candy. Ooh. Oh, you eat the savory. I don't even you eat, eat the chicken. savory ones. I know. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> 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 um, but yes, they're trying to piece together kind of like why things are connected and why we have Abaddon Hotel stuff and like. Who are these clowns? And um, on the back of the pictures of the clown, it says Clarksburg Fair, West Virginia, 1975, mm-hmm. which is when not the same. That's not Margot's incident. But, but it it's was a, at, wasn't it at the Clarksburg Fair? Or was no? it? No. I, what, I thought it was a traveling like oh. it, it moved. Like they were moving from city to city essentially, basically. Okay. And this was where they were beforehand, before they ended up at the one where she almost got abducted. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um kind of like then... basically like I feel like it was insinuating that like the coal itself, how we feel like it was established beforehand, was moving from place to place through the carnival. And then I feel like a certain point they were like, We gotta change our game, we gotta do something, and then somehow came into the hotel, and then that's when things transitioned to the hotel. They were nearby the Abaddon, Mm -hmm. and they were like, this place is a good spot. It's got a portal to hell. Yeah. Um, And then this is where we get mentioned the first time that we get mention of three mannequins from Rebecca. Yes. Whenever she says the two mannequins up there are the same two mannequins in this photo, and she Rebecca goes, three mannequins. And she's like, what? And then – 
but basically we brush over that for now Wait, and um Margot, is- I keep wanting to call her Margaret. <laughs> Margot is like we have got finally got a direct connection between the manor and the hotel. Mm-hmm. And then as they're sitting there, they're the buttons, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. bing. Little call buttons go off. The little button goes, and off. they're like, "What the fuck is that?" And that's when Rebecca is like, "It's the bell service, the the, the, the call button." Yeah, uh huh. Um, because obviously. Because, like, they're like, who the fuck is doing that? And then that's whenever they're going to investigate. And they go, they end up in the clown room, right? Yeah. Well, or they, no, 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 no. They go one of the bedrooms and that's when the clown is in the bedroom. And they're like, how the fuck did he get there? Yeah. Because they see that because they can see which room it was calling from. Right, and they yeah. saw that it was coming from Patrick's room. Mm-hmm. So they go upstairs to investigate in Patrick's room and they get up there and the creepy triangle face clown mm-hmm. is standing there just in the middle of the room. The like, one that looks like a real person. Yeah, the mm-hmm. one that looks like a real person is just standing there and um, fucking creepy as shit. Mm-hmm. And uh it, that part scared me. Very creepy. And then I think at that point, Rebecca like goes downstairs or hears something or hears a door downstairs. And so she ends up walking down there. And that's whenever she sees that the closet door is open again. But then a ball comes and rolls out towards her from yep. it. And she continues to go towards it by herself. <laughs> because, yeah. Which I just do don't understand. I was like, Rebecca, get away from that. You're smarter than this. I would have just thrown the ball back and then ran away. I would have not touched that ball. <laughs> And I would have just ran away. And I would have um, been like, Margo, you get down here with me. Yeah. Um, I would and, not have investigated. And, and because she goes further. And what does she ends up going into the closet because you can't see anything on this side of the closet at first. And so that means I'm going to walk in. And then she turns around. And then like on the edge of the other side of the of it is the fucking one of the other fucking clowns. And the clown's just right there like, wow. Yeah. And she's and, like, oh, my God. Yeah, she screams, and then they go into the closet. The clown's head is moved, mm-hmm. by the way. Yeah. Um, and then basically we just kind of flash to Margot and Chase talking, Yeah. right? Mm-hmm. The cameras shut off. They turn them off after freaking out. And we get with Margot and Chase talking about basically what happened to Chase. Mm-hmm. And Chase is explaining how... Over the course of these days, he was seeing this little girl who kept saying she can't find her mom Mm -hmm. and was asking for help to, you know, find her mom. And every time he would try to help her, like she would disappear kind of thing. And she kept just reappearing throughout the day wherever he was. And eventually he realized she's not real. Yeah. And then. um, But before she faded, I think from the last time she said and she told him. To go with Margot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She said, go with Margot. And then I think it was, was that day or the next day she ended up calling him and asking him to go out. The next day. Yeah. To go with him to the Carmichael Manor. So it's like the timing of things is very weird. And that's kind of where we were saying like, well, what if she is somehow was sent through like the evilness of the, the Abaddon Hotel or the Carmichael Manor and essentially was coaxing him to come because of his association with um Miss Margot. So I don't know, there's a lot of strings there that can be connected maybe if they wanted to dive into more information or more in that background. Um but yeah, and I think even at this point they're both kind of like like this is just there's a lot of weird shit going on, man. It's uh pretty haunted out here. And that's whenever we end up uh Margot ends up hearing something or something like that. Yeah, they wake up to another sound outside the room. She yeah. said it sounded like a yell and then a thud, which I'm assuming was Chase's Margo, like mm-hmm. as he started to yell Margo and then got cut off. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm assuming she woke up to. Yeah. But didn't open her door. Yeah. And so, because and then she heard nothing else. Uh-huh. Because she wakes Rebecca up and then they're like, huh, but... We're okay. We're all right. We're going to go back to bed. Mm -hmm. And that's whenever they wake up the next day and they find Chase's bag is like right in front of their door in the hallway. And then they're looking for him around the house kind of frantically and they can't find him. And then Margo is like, Rebecca, call his phone. And that's when it ends up somehow being under their bed. Which I'm like, how the fuck did it end up there? It was under right? Chase's bed. Oh, it was under his bed? Yeah, she oh, I was guess in I didn't his see her. room. Oh, my bad. Okay, I thought they were still in her room for some reason. Um, but it was under his bed. And then that's whenever she's bringing up how he did text her the night before. Like, hey, was that you? 
but she never responded, thinking that he must have been thinking about the same sound that she heard. Yeah. But in reality, you're right. It was probably the noise of what he made whenever he went away. Mm -hmm. So he had had texted her before that. Um, and then that's whenever I think Rebecca's like kind of like she walks off, I think, because she's like kind of almost done with the situation. And then we have Chase's last recording before he, I guess, went missing. And it's basically showing the what happened the night before, how he was in the bedroom. And then there was, like, knocks on the door. And he thinks it's Margo. And he goes out to check. But nobody's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, it starts with him just, like, sitting there pouring one out because he had said that he was going to drink to get through the night. Yeah. Because even, I think, Margo had asked him, hey, do you want to bunk with Rebecca and I? Yeah. Um, which I would have been like, yes. Yeah. Um, but that, and he says this line, he says, let's just hope that we all live to tell the tale, which is like famous last words mm -hmm. because then, yeah, someone starts knocking on his door, but no one's there. And then he, he's like, okay, I'm just going to go to bed. So he turns off the camera and then we wake up to it again with someone knocking on his door mm -hmm. and they knock like three or four times before he gets up, opens the door, and no one's there. Yeah. And then he locks the door. Mm -hmm. It makes a very clear point to show him locking the door. And then the next – oh, this scene creeped me out too because the next shot that we get is of his room pitch black, but the you can see open. the door open. And he's like, someone open my door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's like, I just woke to the sound of somebody opening my door. Mm -hmm. And then he turns the light on. And I put, there he is. There's my favorite boy. Yeah. Because Hell House Clown. Returns. The OG one is in his room. Yeah. And it's, it's like. Kind of staring at him. Menacing. Staring out the window. And he's and then very he like, turns what the his fuck? head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, Chase is just saying he's going to leave. He's like, I'm, I'm on my way out. Like, I'm going to go. And I was like, run, bitch. Yeah. Fucking get out of there. But, um. He is – and this is the first time, first and only time thus far that we've seen the clown actually, actually move. move on, yeah. And it's following him, but basically like Super Mario style. So like it's like it only moves when he's like going forward. So when he turns back, it's like it's, it's closer and closer. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we do see his – we do see him actually walking mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. some point. Yeah. And um, then he's just about to make it to the stairs – whenever it's too late and he goes to yell Margo and he gets cut off mid sentence or mid word and is attacked and his footage goes glitches out glitches out yeah <clears throat> and then um we're with September 4th 1989 okay. Catherine mm -hmm. checking on Patrick yeah and he's in the bed right or no yeah. no yeah 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 and or in his he's bedroom. sitting on the edge of his bed because the clowns are in his room now. Yeah, he has all the clowns. And in she's his room. like, "What the fuck are these clowns, Patrick?" And he doesn't seem okay. And um, that's whenever he starts bringing to her, bringing up like, "We can bring her back." We can yeah, bring he says, Marker "What if back. somebody told you they could bring her back?" Yeah, and she's like, "I don't know about all that." Mm -hmm. She's like, "She's dead." And then she gives him the cross necklace that was from the clock, mm -hmm. and is basically like. I think you need this more than me because then all of a sudden she sees Margaret's bloody dress on his dresser. That's right. And she's to, like, what the hell are you doing with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was like, Jesus Christ, Patrick, like, come on. Mm -hmm. um, and the, then. Mm -hmm, the, she, the clowns are there clowning. And then that's whenever she like goes through the trunk or something and she ends up finding the sheet music. Yeah. He tells her not to go through the trunk. Yeah. So then she comes back later and she finds the sheet music. And um, basically, we get the same little um, tune. Yeah, our mm -hmm. same tune from all the other. It's the Hell House jingle. Yeah, the jingle Hell House Bell jingle. Rock. Something's coming, cold the nightfall, all things die and never come back. And then throw the ashes, grasp your crosses, pray to him, you'll never come back. Mm hmm. Uh, life's a circle full of darkness. Stay with him and never come back. And then she's like, Jesus, Patrick, where did you work? <laughs> <laughs> 
Because, yeah, it's all creepy. Now but we've got words to the song. Do, cryptic and do, dark. Do, mm-hmm. do, 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 and even the, do, t- t- the the key and the tone in which she sings it on, too, it's very, like, minor. So it's just, like, very eerie sounding. Yeah. Um, and so it's the next day. And then Rebecca wants to leave. But so her and Margo end up getting into a fight because Margo wants to wait for Chase. But Rebecca's like, I mean, we could just go. And then Margo's like, but what if he comes back? And so at this point, they're just like, okay, we'll we'll wait a little bit more time. And then that's when I think we start to get more information from Alicia about Tully's earlier days. Yes. About how he was religious um, up until his daughter died. Because he had a family Mm -hmm. and Abigail Tully was his daughter and she died. And it, things kind of turned from there. We we don't know a lot of information, but we do know that like he was he fled from an arrest warrant, um, and ended up meeting Thomas Rollins and Freddie Perkins, the uh-huh. the down a clown guys, um, and somehow in the mix with them ended up maybe starting a cult, um, in the carnival, um, that ended up moving and then ended up settling next to Abaddon. And then that's whenever they ended up setting up like home base essentially in the hotel after that. Yep. Um, and that's whenever Patrick started working at the hotel not long after, I guess, it opened up in the 80s. Um, right? Or 90s, I guess it had to be. Yeah. Yeah, 90s. The, it was or 89, I guess, that same time period. Yeah, that yeah. time frame. Um, because obviously he died in 89. Um, but yeah, or did he? Um, and so at this point, it, I think a few hours have passed and it's like 4 p.m. And Rebecca's like, okay, it's time to really go now. Um, and Margo, I, I guess, kind of goes begrudgingly with her. And they're like, okay, but the car won't start and they can't get car it going. The car is dead, yeah. yeah. So then Margo's like, okay, well, if we walk, if we start now, we can make it before sundown. Which I was like, it's 4 p.m., bitch. The sun goes down in two hours. Yeah, literally. But I was like, I guess it must be summer even though they're wearing coats. And 13, like a mile is at least 15 minutes a mile. So you're talking about 13 of them, 15 times 13. Like that's, just, you're going to be out there for at least Math four wasn't or math five. Him. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. A, that's a four or five hour trek. But they if were. If you're going the whole time consistently. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they were going to try to walk on foot and that's what they do. They are walking along the way and all the while they're coming across like weird things like this weird little abandoned shack kind of thing. Um, It looks like they're almost off the main road now, too. And then they find those crosses with the scarecrows on them. Kind of like almost Blair Witch style in a way. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And then then as they're walking through, they hear shrieking. Yeah. Yeah happening and it's, it's almost like, like a bird because it's so shrill but then it's like no that's a human being like screaming yeah yeah mm-hmm. and then they get a little bit further they're kind of like okay well we'll just keep walking and then they run into a hearse and yeah. uh like even they're thing. like they're even like what the fuck is a hearse doing out here yeah and um then they look down to like this little covered bridge looking area thing and there's a hooded figure standing there and then all of a sudden it multiplies mm-hmm. and there's like two yeah. of them yeah. or at least two of them. Yeah. And they hear the shrieking again and they just start running. Bolt. Bolted back the way that they came. Back and to the Carmichael Manor. They make it back to the house and they're in the house and then they get a text from Chase that says, hi. Which is just like, bitch, that's all you have to say? Yeah. Hi. And then she's like, hey, where have you been? And he says, met some new friends. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what do you mean? And he says, they want to meet you. Yeah. And then. We get like a knock at the door after that. Yeah. Right. And um, she says, okay, come to our room. And he says, they won't like that. And then he says, okay, I'll come. And then knocking on the door happens. Mm -hmm. And then they're kind of standing there like not. Opening the door, mm-hmm. not sure. And then the door just opens on its own. Yeah. And then there's one of the fucking red balls is there. And <laughs> the scary ass red balls. I don't know. Yeah. They are scary. And then Rebecca just runs out, right? Uh-huh. Because she's like, nah, fuck this. And because because they get a text that says they're in your room now. Oh yeah. Once the door opens. And so she's like, Nope. And then um, Margot chases her downstairs. They're hiding in the car. And 
Then we're back with October 10th, Uh 1989, I believe. And it says they didn't die like um, that we're with Patrick and he's – she was like – We thought you were dead. Yeah. Yeah. Catherine. Catherine. Mm -hmm. Catherine was like, we thought you were dead. Where have you been? And he's like, I was in jail. And then he's like, I won't be needing this anymore and throws off his arm sling and his arm's perfectly fine kind of thing. Yeah. And she was like, what What the hell? Like, they're talking about a mass suicide at that hotel that you work at. What is going on? Mm-hmm. She was like, everyone's dead. And he's like, they didn't die. They just crossed over. And he says, I was supposed to be there, mm-hmm. but I was in jail, uh-huh. <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, And then shit starts hitting the fan basically at this point right Mm -hmm, because we're back with the girls now and um i think at this point uh, they get split up somehow because margot's inside but rebecca's still in the car well and then first Catherine sees margaret yeah at hitting like shit hits the fan on the carmichael tapes oh yeah yeah, because Catherine sees margaret margaret down at the end of the hallway yeah just underneath that light bulb Mm -hmm. with her head kind of cocked and then it just like it's just it goes and then we flash to Catherine mm-hmm. in the house and she's saying they're in the house. And you then see this hooded figure rush past and then we get Margaret hiding in Catherine's closet. That scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And um so Catherine goes to hide in her closet once she sees that hooded figure rush mm-hmm. past and um is in there and then all of a sudden hears her name being called and then opens the door and shines some light in there and we see Catherine just sitting there or mm-hmm. Margaret just sitting there and then she her mask falls off and her face is all dead mm-hmm. looking demon like and then we flash to night 4 night f- f- 4 and we're back in the house from the car mhm and that's whenever um is that when Chase contacts Margaret? Yeah, he starts calling Margo? Her. Oh, so not Margaret. Margo. Mm-hmm. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. Chase starts calling Margo's name. Mm-hmm. And um, this is when the 911 tape is starting to line up with what's actually happening in the film. And then um, Chase, like, Margo goes out and... Rebecca calls after her, like, saying, that's not him, that's not him. Yeah. And then Catherine's body in the bed, um, Catherine's body in the bed, like, kind of lunges and goes towards Rebecca Mm -hmm. and then comes towards her again kind of thing. That I remember Rebecca gets, like, attacked by Catherine's body, like, twice. Yeah. Because a lot of this point, too, I feel like this is the most, like, uh, this movie, uh, in terms of the camera, it's very shaky. At yeah. this point, a lot. There's so much going on at this point. Yeah, I, I have to be honest. At some of these moments, I had to kind of be like watching from like my peripheral because uh-huh. they were making me a little nauseous. Nauseous. Like, that's just me because I have really bad motion sickness. Though. Yeah. But um. So um. But yes, all of that's happening. But then I know that at a certain point, um, Margot then ends up running to a different room or some or it's the same room, but she ends up seeing Chase right because he's yeah. facing away from her sitting she down makes in a chair. It into is the... it Patrick's room or? I think it's. The room that Chase was staying in, mm. so the master bedroom. Mm. Mm-hmm. And she's, like, calling out to him, and then, like, that's whenever we get to him and his eyes are bludgeoned out red. Yeah. Just all like all the other out. Mm-hmm, uh, people who come back, I guess. And then they are locked out of their room, right? Mm. Mm. Something like that. And then, because that's whenever we end up coming to um, Marco, she just ends up being the last one there, right? Like the last one that the camera's on, yeah, focused on. And then it cuts away to them talking about how um, how the clown was there when she was a kid at that carnival. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the clown, she's at the end of the hallway. She like basically traps herself into a corner Mm -hmm. and then the clown is coming down the hallway and we see it just grab her head Mm -hmm. and then her footage goes blank. (laughs) Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we get a voiceover of Bradley saying evil never dies. No fire will ever destroy it. You can never claim victory over it. That evil will always exist and will always be there. Mm -hmm. And then the clown was in the background of the picture of young Margot, which was like, 
what? Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, when yeah. it when it zoomed out, I was like, <gasps> it's been there the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we're with Patrick now, mm-hmm. and he is saying, if you're watching this, just know that I had to do it, basically. And then he puts the clown mask on, and you hear him shushing someone mm-hmm. who you can assume is Arthur. Probably, maybe. Yeah. That's what I would assume is there in the um, room with him. And he's mm-hmm. like, it'll all be over soon. And then he puts the clown mask on and looks out the, like, looks at the camera and then walks past the door. And then it's like, roll credits. Yeah. And then at the end of the credits. Post credit scene. We get a Rockland, we get word from Alicia that the Rockland County is starting up the fair again, which mm-hmm. leads us into Since the a hotel perfect. Has been taken down, yeah. Yeah. It leads us into a perfect Segway. fifth one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For um, either the backstory of the fair or a little bit of both. And mm-hmm. with the new fair starting up and the continuation of this cult. Yeah. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. And that is the end of Hell House LLC Origins, the Carmichael Manor. Yes. Much. Yes. Yeah. 2023, written and directed by Stephen Cognetti. Bow, 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 bow. Yes. Um, yeah. That And that, d- 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 yeah, that's the fourth film in our series of Hell House uh, movies. Um, and I, are you ready to get into the ba- the, bo- the ratings? The booze. The booze? Tell me your booze. Um well i feel like there's like a really i mean these movies for us at least in the past few episodes have had a really high standard of rating because we've kind of really liked them we have had a bit of a bias since we've gotten to know a little bit more of like you know the creation and the creator um and we've kind of watched them each like two or three times at this point um for me this one surpasses definitely i feel like number three for sure um is up there in terms of story with number one it definitely has a lot of uh depth to it in terms of connecting dots on what happened um in some of the earlier entries and but also it does a really good job of being its own story like almost if you didn't watch the other movies you could watch this and still follow along and if anything this is kind of like a good way that Steven is reaching out to new uh, audiences and new people to watch because if they watch this, then they're going to be like, oh, well, I need to know the rest of the story. So I'm going to go back and watch all the other films now to catch up. Yeah. Um, But I think that um, it really, this one really did, uh, what's the word? Um, A lot of the other films all all three of the other films had like a big cast, like had like all these supporting cast members that kind of made up the whole. Mm-hmm. Whereas this one had really, for m- most of it, just really Margot, Rebecca, and Chase. Yeah. Um. I mean, we also, of course, had Patrick and his sisters, Douglas, Bradley, and Alicia, but they were more or less the focus of the story. And I think that the movie benefited from having just them three as opposed to like, you know, five people and then the two near you know from the other the other groups and stuff like that yeah so i thought that was pretty cool and it was able for us to focus on more intimate long scares in the terms of like whenever chase was in the house and we had um you know what i'm assuming was margaret right in the looking out yeah and scaring him like she did to uh catherine and then um just that was a really long drawn out scene, even when the clown was pacing Back and forth. Unfortunately, Chase kind of got the worst end of it, right? Even at the end when he was getting chased by the clown, like it was just all pretty terrifying for him. Um, and it's maybe because he had that necklace. Maybe. Maybe Patrick was like, bitch, that's my necklace. Yeah, probably. Give me back that necklace. And then we had a lot of good. Um, I had. Hmm. The, I guess it's almost like fan service, but not fan service in the way that things were connected. Um, and we finally got to be um, let in on a little bit more on how things came to be. Um, I don't know. Overall, I thought it was well-paced. It wasn't, like, too long. Yeah, um, an hour and 38 minutes. Uh, yeah, uh, other than, like, a few points where I just personally couldn't watch because of my motion sickness, because this movie did have um, 
a bit more of shake to it, I feel like, than the other ones, which is uh, kind of funny because also in the beginning, and especially in a lot of the moments that it had with like Bradley and Alicia, it had more of a, um, uh, what's the word, like AHS Roanoke, um, what's, I don't know, it's the true crime documentary, like documentary docu style. style. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like interviewing mm-hmm. one-on-one with people and then showing us like what happened very like snapped almost, which is like the other films. But I feel like this one did it definitely, I feel like in a different way, maybe because they had more of a budget or, um, maybe because it wasn't necessarily like a news outlet or like the morning, you know, what were they called again? Morning mysteries. Morning mysteries and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. Um I'm going to give it four point five. A four point five out 4. of five. 5 out mm-hmm. of five boosts, yeah. That's good. Mm-hmm. I think I have no fun facts. I think this film was too new. Mm-hmm. So there's no really fun facts that I can find on the internet um right now. But um other than what fun facts we are learning are learning mm-hmm. through the interviews and stuff, which y'all will learn with us. Yeah. We don't um, want to spoil that. Yeah. So um, I think – I think I'd have to give this one – I did like this one I think more than two and three. Mm-hmm. I don't remember when I gave two and three already. I, I think they were because I think they were like four point. They were three was definitely a four, I believe, for you. Yeah, I feel like because one was a four point like eight. I think. And two, I gave. Yeah, one I bumped it up to a five. Mm-hmm. That's probably the first one. And then yeah, and then two, I think I did a four point five. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I think I'll go with a 4.5 as well. I, overall, like you said, we had longer scares. I thought the scares in this film were probably some of the best Mm -hmm. out of the whole series other than the first film. Mm -hmm. The first film, I just, I guess because that was the first time I had ever seen that clown, it just, it scared the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember being nervous to be around my clowns and stuff that night and stuff at my house. And so I think the clown was still equally as scary. And then that new clown, oh, that new clown, he scared, he scared me almost even more more Mm -hmm. because he looked so realistic. And um, then just overall, I think the scares itself were better. I think Margaret peeking around the corner was absolutely horrifying. And I loved it. I thought it was a great scene. And I think the acting in this film was all super believable. I really enjoyed Margot's character. And I liked the, you know, representation, too, that we had with Margot and Rebecca. Mm -hmm. That was really cool. Um, And overall, I just I think this was a really solid sequel. Well, if we call it a sequel. Yeah. Sequel to our sequel. original trilogy. Um, the start of a new trilogy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think they did, Stephen did a stand-up job with it. And if, seriously, if you haven't watched these films, you're doing a great disservice to yourself. Mm-hmm. They're really, really good, easy watches. All of them are, you know, about an hour and a half long. Mm-hmm. They're all super easy to get through. And as long as you don't get motion sick, this one this did one, have a little bit more of the like just putting the camera down and walking kind of yeah. thing, which made the camera really shaky a whole lot. Uh, it was actually really weird because like this one for out of all of them made me the most sick. The other yeah. ones didn't even make me that like I could kind of watch throughout the whole thing. This one I had to kind of like go like this and just listen and do my best to look every two seconds and be like, oh, OK. What's happening now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, But, and then this one is the first time I really noticed the soundtrack too. And Uh I liked it. I thought it was well-placed whenever it was there. Um, And so, yeah, I liked the backstory of the Carmichaels and I enjoyed how 
again, those little threads were put in to the storyline and connecting the Carmichael Manor to the Abaddon Hotel. So, yeah, overall a 4.5 from me and Josh. Mm -hmm. So So 4.5 overall. 4.5 overall for Hell House LLC Origins, the Carmichael Manor, 2023, written and directed by Stephen Cognetti. Say that three times. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Um, but, um, yeah. Mouthful, but it's worth it. It is. And uh, I, it's kind of until the next time we get an entry into the Hell House universe. Um, for now, at least on our part of covering the series, um, we'll be waiting until the next one. But make sure to stay tuned and look out for the new podcast called Abaddon Eyes because there will be more to delve into with the the Hell House LLC universe, different interviews with different cast members, crew members, um, the director himself. And yeah, it's going to be hopefully a chilling and thrilling new adventure. Yes. Yes. Well, lots of, lots of fun interviews. Mm-hmm. So, And we'll be on some of them and we'll release some on our feed as well as them being released on their own feed. So mm-hmm. be on the lookout for that. Um, we'll be do- diving into another film series, um, part of the conjuring, part universe, of the conjuring universe right? yeah. next. Mm-hmm. And then we'll also be doing some Christmas films, yes. um, to stay in the holiday spirit. Cause it's Christmas time coming up real fast. You guys. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's already December. Um, but yeah. So, um, as always, we're in the lovely rogue media network studios, They take great care of us, and Mm -hmm. you can listen to us and all the other amazing podcasts that they have all in one central place, and that is... At RogueMeanNetwork.com. And then you can also listen to us on a slew of podcasting platforms, the biggest two being... Apple. And also Spotify, which thanks to all of our Spotify listeners who Mm -hmm. had us in their top um, podcasters Mm -hmm. And their Spotify wrapped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was really fun to see that. Shout Um, out. Yeah, shout out to y'all. And it was my own it's, was like, your most listened to podcast was Boobays. And uh, I was like, well, that's because I have to listen yeah. to it. But, but I also do. I, I like listening yeah. to our episodes. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I didn't share it because I thought that would no. be weird. <laughs> well, did you see even I Spice shared her Spotify app and it was literally she streamed her own like her top three songs were like Deli and uh, Boys a Liar and like something else. Because I mean, so honestly, work. That's business. Like if the, you stream your own shit. Like yeah. if, if anybody's going to put numbers on it, you know, you're going to do it yourself. You know exactly. what I mean? Like you got to help yourself out. So um, yes, we listen to and play our own podcast to get the numbers up. But we actually enjoy listening to it as well yeah we're um, fans yeah we're fans of ourselves obviously because we're narcissists yes. um who else has podcasts i feel like anybody who has a podcast you have it's at least a little bit of narcissism little, in you because you like to hear yourself talk um yep. but um so wherever you do listen though don't forget to rate review like and subscribe and murder because <laughs> that is the only way we can get ahead in this world uh kesley finally reviewed us Yay. And she put the only podcast I actually listened to. Cute. And she put that she was number one fan, Kiss, which She's she is our, our number top one fan. Point zero 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 one percent. Yeah, she yeah. was. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh shout out to you, Kesley. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, and then you can reach out to us if you want to let us know your thoughts on Hell House and the world that they're building, or if you wanna reach out to us and let us know your thoughts on the Annabelle series Mm -hmm. um we'll be covering annabelle annabelle creation and annabelle come home annabelle comes home yep and so you can reach out to us and let us know your thoughts on that on our one social media platform um and that is instagram and that is at at boo bays podcast and that's at b-o-o-b-a-e-s because we're your boo bays not your boo babes that's right and um if you have questions about for abaddon eyes as well you can reach out to us on there as Mm -hmm. well um because they don't have social media yet. So if you want to listen to them and figure it out, figure stuff out about them, you can do that by reaching out to us. Um, But until next time, you guys. Bye, bays. Bye, bays.
This has been a Rogue Media Network production.